Well, hi everyone. Welcome to another installment of our Future of Real Estate series. I am Rachel Allard with Union Street Media here today, your MC, and I have a very exciting guest. I have Rich Millentree here, who is the Chief Technology Officer at PMZ Real Estate. So thank you for being here, Rich. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm so excited because I think you're actually the first CTO that we that we talk to. So, um, you know, having a totally different background than a lot of the broker owners, founders, even marketing directors that we've talked to as part of the series. I'm curious if you can, you know, tell us the story. How did you get into real estate and what does a CTO do for PMZ today? Uh, uh, uh. Well, uh, <laughs> how I got into real estate is interesting. So I had a buddy of mine who worked for PMZ and, you know, we talked back and forth and I was very happy at my previous job. And, you know, there would be some things that would come up tech wise. And he's like, hey, can you help me out with this? You know, um, the, the, the staff that we have in place, they're fantastic, but they just can't seem to to get past this particular issue. So, you know, he every once in a while call me with a, a challenge or two uh, that was something in that vein. And one day he asked, he says, you know, would you just be interested in coming and working over here? And of course I was like, no, not at all. I'm completely and totally happy. I love what I do. I love where I'm at. And right now it just doesn't make sense for me. And we went back and forth like this for two years and to make a long story short, you know, he asked, he said, would you just be willing to come in and sit down and talk with a couple guys that are here? And uh, I said, sure, I'll come by, we'll have a conversation. Still completely happy in my current role and what I was doing. And I came in, had the initial conversation and it was just that, it was just a conversation. It was uh, kind of a getting to know and uh, just exploring what the possibilities were and still had no intention of leaving my current place. And as I thought about it more and more, I was just like, well, maybe let's let's see what what are the opportunities and what's going on and and what is this industry real estate? And uh, long story short, I ended up talking with our with my um, uh, CEO, uh, my direct report, and he said, you know, we'd love to have you, and I uh, I want to make you an offer that you're not going to be able to refuse, and you know, it just went from there. And I tell you what, ever since coming over. Um, I, uh, I've had two jobs that I've absolutely loved in my career. Uh, the first one was Apple and just absolutely loved it. And um, uh, I would probably still be at Apple today uh, had it not been for uh, some hours and uh, scheduling that just didn't work for my schedule with young children back then. And uh, the second one is PMC where I'm at today. I absolutely love what I do. I love the environment that I'm in. I love how I get to help people and make a difference in this particular space. So it's it's just been fantastic. That's a little awesome. Long, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's uh, this industry is nothing if not persistent, right? You gotta totally. respect. That. So I'm curious. I mean, you talk about loving your job, loving helping people. What yeah. does helping people look like today for you in the middle of this? pandemic and also with business booming and being where you are on the West Coast? Yeah, yeah. Well, really good question. I think, first of all, I take probably a different approach. And my approach is, is I don't want the IT department to look, feel, or in any way uh, model this kind of wooden, literal, kind of um, non-personal environment. So the very first thing, I think the thing that's on top of my list is I wanna be an ambassador for what you're actually going to experience in information technology at PMZ. And that means that it's a very personable uh, department. It is a department that completely and totally empathizes with you, that there is no such thing as uh, you coming with a, a quote unquote dumb question or, uh, you know, I'm just so stupid at tech, like that's just non-existent and it should not be something that creates a barrier for you to come and receive the kind of help and uh, to be able to advance your business no matter what. So I want to be a first and foremost, a brand ambassador for PMZ. 
And what that means is when you think of IT, when you think of support and technology and where we're going, I don't want you to think of technology. I want you to think of big rich. I want you to think of a warm, bubbly personality, a personality that you feel comfortable asking anything and everything and knowing that you are going to be viewed and looked at as an equal, as a person who is just as valuable to the organization, but we have different roles. So that would be my primary uh, place of service at PNC. Secondarily, uh, it's making sure that our organization moves forward and keeps in step with, and in some places maybe even outpaces technology in general in this particular sector. So that is uh, making sure that we are using maybe not the latest and greatest, but the latest and greatest, using technology that is going to advance us and make our, our agents or those people who are using our tools one step ahead of the competition, that they are going to be able to get things done. They're going to be able to work on their terms, not on the technology's terms. And they're going to be able to close deals. They're going to be able to be a brand ambassador for their customers, where the technology just kind of moves out of the way. And now we're in a space where everything just seems to work and it's fluid. So I guess that's how I would describe that uh, in a little bit of a nutshell. So it sounds like you view your job really as not just creating that amazing user experience online for possible buyers, sellers, et cetera. It's actually more about creating that user experience for your agents. Absolutely, but it is in online as well. I mean, so we have in-house developers that develop everything that you see uh, facing forward, or not everything, it used to be everything, but now we've branched out and we, we're using tools now that um, are we leverage that People are doing better than what we could do in-house and making sure that we have great vendor partnerships to go and coincide with that, that have the same values, the same kind of uh, respect for technology that we do. That's so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because I feel like everyone I talk to, whether you understand technology or you don't, you do understand the importance of it as an enabler of these relationships. And oh. so I'm curious that during, during our COVID times, sort of what have you found are the must-haves, both maybe for your team and, you know, the people who report to you, but also your agents in order to connect? Like, what are the, some of the things that you hadn't been doing before that, and actually maybe things you'll continue to do once hopefully this is all over? Yeah, well, I don't know that I would answer that question differently. There's a couple things that we ended up doing right at the end of 2019 that really set us up really well for 2020. And that was making sure that our organization was almost, I mean, 95% cloud-based. And so using tools like Microsoft Teams or Slack or uh, maybe some of the one-offs like Skype or um, Facebook uh, Rooms or anything like that, those are super important. And when we went and fully cloud in our organization, and then we discovered, hey, it's time to work from home. And yes, you're going to be able to do your job fully and completely. And the technology is going to support you in that. It was wonderful because there were just a few things that we had to do on the back end to get really tooled up mm -hmm. um, to, to make that happen. And some of those things were like we had to go out and purchase laptops and, and, and machines for uh, our employees and some of our staff. But after the purchase of the hardware, it was as simple as just signing in and then your profile, your data, everything was on your desktop for you. And had we not made those changes in 2019 and, and really since my tenure here of getting us to that particular place, we would not have been in a position where we are now where we continue to thrive. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember the pain of the first hard drive crash. You know, you never get beyond right. it when you lose yes. all your documents. You only have to learn that lesson once, hopefully. Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> So, well, that's awesome. And I'm also curious, so I know that, you know, um, real estate agents typically being, you know, super um, active type A entrepreneurial salespeople out in the field or virtually, you know, um, data and technology isn't necessarily their thing, though there are a lot of people who are incredibly adaptable. And I think this year has shown us that 
more than anything else is how um, it's the confidence we should have in ourselves and in our industry to be able to be agile. Um, mm-hmm. What, you know, for you, what is that thing that you think that they don't even know about, or maybe your team doesn't even know about that you actually think is the next thing that will help make that frictionless experience for them or their customers? What's that next like milestone that you want to build or, or give them on, on the tech side of things? That's a that's a hard question. Um, I don't know that I have an answer for that. Uh, I'm so sorry. That that's that's a really great question. Um, I put you on the spot. <laughs> you did you did? Which I mean, which is totally fine. I just don't know that I have an answer for you in that regard. Um, I I do think that um, using tools more like Teams and Slack. Um, are going to be newer technologies that are going to push our organization forward Mm -hmm. even more so. Um, But I I feel like in IT at least, we've been talking about tools like this for such a long time that it almost feels like it's an old conversation. Mm -hmm. But as far as our agents and our employees actually using the tools, uh, it's still not quite that much of a reality yet. It's becoming more and more of a reality, but it's not quite that much of a reality yet. So uh, I feel like there's big opportunity there. And uh, for us personally, I think we also have this big space where we are using more and more uh, the power of a CRM in our organization. And I think that's going to uh, to do that as well. But you know, a CRM is not new, though that's an, a very old technology. Um, it's, um, so I, I, I don't know how to answer that. And I don't want to ramble and then keep going on. That's fine. It's actually interesting. I'm, I'm, some of the people I've been talking with, they, they really are saying, you know, there's almost this sort of doubling down on what you have from a technology and process standpoint, as opposed sure. to really chasing the next shiny thing. And I think that's totally fair too. And there's value in that, you know, efficiency isn't, isn't sexy, isn't exciting in the same way that innovation is, but an innovation is just an incremental change. It's just a different way of doing something. It can be tiny though. It can be taking a break every 90 minutes to be more productive. It doesn't have to be like this whole new system. (laughs) Right. Totally agree with you. And I think there's a lot of wisdom too that comment as well, doubling down on what's existing in your world, because there really isn't a lot of new, let's say bleeding edge or even really cutting edge technology that's happening uh, in IT space right now. Now, that's not to say that there isn't anything new and exciting happening, of course there is. But as far as, you know, it's not like it was maybe 10 years ago, uh, when we are, you know, mobile is just really an explosion back then. Mm-hmm. And um, this new platform of mobile computing, and then it doubles down into um, uh, maybe what we call mobile computing, micro computing. And then now we get a little bit bigger devices in our tablets and so forth. And uh, so it's, it's just not that right now. I'm looking forward to when it is that again, but I just don't feel like it is that right now. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, y- you and I both <laughs> are looking right. forward to that. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm also curious, you know, I, I don't know if this is part of your role as CTO, but oftentimes I feel like the, the, the back office team that's supporting um, the agents and that's sort of enabling that, that front end amazing brand experience and user interaction um, is also the team that's responsible for sort of the metrics and making sure things are on track and knowing you know, when the numbers are going in the wrong direction or going in the right direction. And so I'm curious how much in your role you're tracking sort of adoption either internally, um, but also adoption among potential customers, you know, how many leads are coming in or how much possible business there is, um, sides, market share, things like that. How does that come into your day-to-day at all? Yeah, so that actually is something new that we are currently working in right now. So I'm not going to be able to speak intelligently to this. And this would actually be a better conversation for uh, our head of marketing. And she is just fantastic, does a fantastic job there. 
But yes, so we are moving forward in that space now of being able to track uh, marketing or excuse me, those types of different metrics and being able to capitalize on those micro movements where we're talking about, you know, less than 1%. What if we capture that less than 1%? What does it mean for us in terms of revenue and dollars over a, a 365 day period? Mm -hmm. And we're just starting to see as we look into some of those metrics and look at some of those details that if we do capture that less than 1%, it could potentially turn into a, a $750,000 uh, net capture if we're smart and if we do the right thing. So um, we are just starting to look at that. And I think that that's going to be a great place for us to uh, have success. And also um, was gonna probably open the door to some new business um, the more that we get into that. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I, I definitely think there's, there's power in it. You have to have a team that really likes to look at it. Totally. Um, totally. And you know, I'm curious because part of those those micro moments are um, having the intelligence, having the data, having the tools in place, and it's also the understanding how to use it. And so yeah. back to your comment about the CRM, you know, how much has agent training and education, especially virtual training and education, come into your day-to-day -day or sort of your firm's day-to-day -day now during COVID and maybe even before? Yeah, so... Maybe I'll answer that question in two different ways. Um, uh, let, let me go back, let me say this. Um, because in looking at some of those metrics on the back end, I don't think that our success in this particular area would be as good, or it wouldn't even probably be on our radar had we not had a great partner in this. And this is a chance for me kind of to uh, to toot uh, Union Street's horn a little bit. And I think I have to do this because um, Anna has just been a phenomenal resource for us in this particular space. And drawing out some of those opportunities that um, we were overlooking, uh, bringing attention to some of those opportunities that we had just brushed off or we didn't even have eyes for. So when Anna and um, began to have discussions with us and saying, hey, Rich, you know, have a look at this. And if you capture this, it's going to equal this for you guys in new revenue. Or if you, you know, kind of trap for this data and kind of um, uh, make a, um, a space for it, what you're going to see in about a three to six month time frame is X, Y, Z. And I'll tell you what. Anna has been spot on. There is not, maybe I'll say it this way. I have yet to be proven wrong by Anna's advice. Uh, so much so that um, I, I don't know that us moving into this new place of where we are on the web uh, would be possible without her uh, guidance, her uh, intervention and her wisdom. It's just been phenomenal. So um, yeah, so I, I, I absolutely, no, thank you guys. And thank you, Anna, because um, it, it really is truly valuable. And then going forward and talking about the education piece, um, education is something that we, it, it's just baked into who we are as a culture here at PMZ. And we have a, a trainer who is uh, on staff. We have training that is going on literally every single week at uh, PMZ. Uh, we have what we've ca uh, called uh, PMZ University and uh, we branded and called uh, another piece of that PMZ9, uh, which there's, there's more meaning behind that and you, there's so much more you can find out about this on our website and, and, and so forth. But the training that goes into um, bringing our new agents on board or bringing agents who are seasoned, who have been with us and saying, there's some new tech coming and this is how you're gonna use it. And this is how it's going to benefit your business and how it's going to grow uh, your organization as, uh, uh, as you sell homes or commercial real estate or whatever it is. Uh, that is, um, we have two metrics that uh, at PMZ, when people come aboard or they leave or they're looking at us, 
um, these two are, are they, they're, they're neck and neck. What brings you to PMZ? It's a tie between, we'll say a tie, uh, between the tech and the training. And uh, those two drivers in our organization are absolutely vital, not only to the health of PMZ, but also to the culture that surrounds PMZ that goes into making us so successful. So great question. Uh, I think it's absolutely vital that we have good training in place. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you for your shout outs for sure. I'll tell Anna. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious, you, you mentioned the word culture a couple of times. And so I'm curious if you can talk about what makes the PMZ culture so unique and special in your view. Yeah. Um, I think it's a culture that's derived from the top down. So everything that we experience in this, this culture that we know here at PMZ is something that our uh, owners, so PMZ is uh, family owned uh, by uh, Mike, John, and Paula Zagaris, and their father started PMZ uh, way back when, and he has uh, since passed away and now uh, the, uh, the siblings own PMZ. And their leadership and contributing to this, really, it's a top-down culture. That um, their philosophy on life, their philosophy on business, their philosophy of, you know, some of our core values are uh, always, um, that we're always learning, that we are, um, I'm, I'm at a loss right now. Oh, I, I can see one, build a positive and family spirit. Uh, within the the organization and the uh, in your teams, uh, this is things that they all practice and that they live on an everyday basis. So, uh, you know, some places you go into and it's just like, yeah, these are just plaques that are on the wall. These are just things that people say. Um, that's not the case at PMZ. Um, the um, Mike, Paula, and John, the the, the siblings are the most generous and selfless uh, individuals and people that I think you will meet in the real estate space. They are just wonderful people. And that translates down into a culture that is soaked in gratitude and admiration and appreciation. And how can I help you? Like the, the term servant leader comes to mind. And I know that's kind of a uh, it's a dated term now. It's kind of run its, um, its time in our space. And now we've moved on to other buzzwords. But I think the term servant leader embodies um, these uh, Mike, Paul, and John. And uh, the culture that is created, like you can go where, where, if you're a customer and you walk in the door and you need help um, and you happen to get the, the, the CTO or you happen to get the, uh, the, the vice president of residential, and you wanna know, well, well, where can I go to pay my rent at your mortgage, um, uh, uh, your property management company? It's not a, oh, you need to go see this person. It's, hey, let me walk you over. Let me show you where you need to go. And that kind of uh, concierge experience that um, you're, everyone is involved in. So that's the culture. It's, it's, um, uh, it's all of that and some. That sounds amazing. I love that attitude of no, no job is, is beneath them and really truly leading by example and servant leadership. I think there will always be a new buzzword. You can bring back the old words. Right? I love it too. Totally. <laughs> and you mentioned curiosity too and that thirst for learning. And so I'm also, I'm curious, um, you know, what do you personally, what have you found, you know, we were talking about before the interview started that both of us didn't start our careers in real estate. You know, right. we started at Apple and I was in the CPG industry. And so as still, you know, somewhat newbies, I think you're new if you haven't spent 30 years here. Right. Um, totally what are the resources that you found really helpful for you to learn not only about the industry, but also just to stay current with technology and with what's happening? Yeah, so there's a lot of real estate that I still absolutely feel lost in. Uh, some of the buzzwords, some of the, uh, the everyday words, not even necessarily buzzwords, but, you know, because my world is technology and it's my job to push us forward as a company um, with, that, with technology that serves us to be better. Mm -hmm. So um, in this process, though, 
And this is where Mike has been really great. And um, Mike is the CEO of um, PMZ Real Estate and he's my direct report. And he's always created an opportunity for me to learn, for me to uh, grow, not only in my professional role, but also in just learning what real estate is. Even on, uh, I think this was maybe in the first three or four months that I was here and I've been here just over six years now. And he says, Rich, he says, I know that your world is IT and real estate is, you know, is, is, is what we do here, but your world is IT. And he says, but I want you to know that if at any time you decide that you want to just further your education in real estate and uh, being able to, not that you're going to ever sell real estate or do anything like that, but you just want to understand it better, that you want to maybe get licensed for the purpose of just, I, I know real estate better. You let me know and we'll take care of it. And we'll make all of that happen. So those opportunities that are, they exist in the organization. And it's something that I have to continue to educate myself on. Although I will be the first to say that um, I, I don't find real estate as um, uh, intriguing or as um, uh, exciting as I do technology. So my, uh, my passion and my, my drive uh, to learn some of those things is not necessarily there, but I do. Um, we participate in um, Realty Alliance and it's a, uh, a group of realtors and uh, brokerages who are get together and collaborate and how can we be better and what can we do to uh, push real estate forward and learning the culture. So those are just a few things I think that I can think of off, uh, that are top of mind. Uh, and including, you know, subscriptions and uh, online portals that I can learn in and things like that. So, yeah, well, that's great. And I think that's great advice for, you know, people listening out there is two things you said that really resonated with me is, is one sort of knowing your strengths and also not being afraid to, to know where, you know, you don't necessarily want to go to. So sure. having, you know, having those strong partners or having people you can rely on, um, but also sort of the confidence that just because you aren't that expert doesn't mean you don't have something to add too. Right. Right. You know, I actually remember way back when I was first learning how to run ads through DoubleClick, which became part of the Google platform, but used to be its own um, yeah. way back when. Um, I was having an issue with a JavaScript tag and I had to ask someone to teach me JavaScript and I thought he was the smartest person in the world. And he just said, no, I just know different things, right. not more or less, right. it's different. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's a good reminder, though. I mean, I'm humble talking to you because the CTO, I'm like, wow, I, you know, you probably know so much more than I do about this stuff. And I feel the exact same way. I mean, I don't look at my um, what I do as like something special. It's just it's just what I do. It's just my role here. And like you said, I think you said it perfectly. My role is not better or less than anyone else's here. And it doesn't mean that when I walk into the restroom or and I see paper towels on the floor that I walk by and say, oh, that's not my job. Janitorial will get that. It is my job. I love this company and it's something that I want to do. And uh, I want to make sure that um, when the next person goes into the restroom after me, they have a wonderful experience. So, um, yeah, there's there's I love that. I love what you said. There's no job beneath me. I can tell how much you love it too. I feel like PMZ, Mike is very lucky to have you. And I feel okay. very lucky we've been able to talk for the sake of not having you stare at another screen on another Zoom for hours and hours. Cause I think we're all tapped out. I just have one more question and then I'll yeah. let you go, Rich. What's something fun that, that most people don't know about you or that you'd share with everyone that's maybe oh. outside of real estate? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I've got a lot. So, um, <laughs> I am, uh, uh, I, I'd like to call myself a copy snob, even though I'm really not. Uh, I love copy. My idea of a great vacation or a great time away is to uh, sit in a lodge in ice cold weather with snow coming down and a great cup of coffee and a good book. Uh, that's something that I think a lot of people don't know. And then another thing that my wife and I do, we are um, uh, marriage coaches. And so, um, we, we travel literally the country and we host uh, and we put on marriage retreats for marriages. 
and just how to make your marriage better and how to do better and uh, how you can be a better spouse and show up as your best self. And I think we can all remember at some point, especially like when we were dating and maybe those first uh, few years of marriage where you, you just had that very intangible, but tangible at the same time, that feeling of connection and passion and love and the butterflies in the tummy, all that stuff. Um, that is something that we help couples build intimacy so they can continue to experience those things. So that would probably be something that people don't know uh, a lot about me. And um, uh, they could find out more about that if they wanted to uh, about us on, um, on our website. I don't know if I could share that or not, yeah. but put in a plug. Let's do it. It's uh, growinginmarriage.com and um, they can learn a little bit more there. So Awesome. Well, everyone go check out Rich. I feel like next time you come to Burlington, when people are traveling again, you have to see us because I would love to hear more. Um, and thank you so much for being here for everyone. Again, this is Rich Millentree. This is the chief technology officer of PNZ Real Estate, a very successful, independent, family owned and run. Um, sounds like very admirable organization at large. So I'm Rachel Allard with Union Street Media. Again, this is our Future of Real Estate series and stay tuned for our next one.